Hey everyone, Cooper here, host of the fine podcast you're listening to. I just want to let you know that the episode you clicked on has a format that is very heavily inspired by a podcast called The Bookening. To be clear, our thoughts and opinions in this episode are our own, but the format is very similar to this podcast. I just wanted to give you a heads up and give credit where it is due. With that out of the way, enjoy the show. Coming up next, Bogan It Reads, Robinson Crusoe. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Book and I am, of course, your humble and eloquent host, Mr. Cooper Cobbs. And joining me today are two of my good friends, Mr. Isaiah Radetsky. Hello. And Mr. Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. Well, fellas, here we are, arguably the greatest book podcast ever, talking about not arguably one of the not one of the best books ever. Mm. <laughs> not arguably not one of the best books ever. <laughs> I mean, I don't, disagree. Out, guys. I, I don't not undisagree with you. Yeah, oh. I know, right? My brain hurts. What? <laughs> You're working that on your head. It's taking too long. All yeah. right, let's get started. <laughs> anyway, before we do that, I just want to say last week, or two weeks ago, I challenged people to write a story of how Tanner's appearing bookshelf came into existence. And lo and behold, our patron Anna answered the call with a really, really fun story. A lot of references to... In about three hours. Yeah, I mean, it was really fast, too. And, and a lot of references to BookNet lore. I I didn't realize that it wasn't actually the bookshelf providing the books. Yeah, it was I know. Little mice. L- little mice. Oh, oh, little. whoa! Spoiler little alert. Hot. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. it's you not a spoiler. It's a teaser. Patreon. It makes you want to read it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I, I. It's not just for patrons. You anyone can go read it. Anyone Any can old go read it. uh Free person. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a patron. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, I was. I was trying to think of a thing to say. Any old folk, any yeah. any folks. Yes. Anyways. Anyway, it's it's really fun, really fun, and a lot of references to booking it lore. Also, my cousin has pledged to write a story. He hasn't finished it yet, but when he does, I'll let you guys know. But Slow. Today, it's supposed to get it done in a day. Not everybody can write a story in a day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like a three-page story too. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Um, today we're talking about Robinson Crusoe. Yay. That guy. So, what you, what you guys baggage on this book? Uh, I didn't actually, yeah, 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 nothing, nothing special. I just saw it on the school book list. My mom bought it, Dover Thrift Edition, so that was awesome. Oh, my God. And just read it for school. But, like, as soon as I started reading it, or, like, got to the point where I could tell it was about, like, being on the uh, stranded on the island and stuff, yeah. I knew that it was going to be like I knew that this was what had caused like so many other. I, yes, I'm not it saying is the, this the it's right the original way. shipwreck um, story. Yes. If that's what you mean. Original shipwreck story, yeah, like Swiss Family Robinson, yeah, uh, Castaway, just like Cast so away, many yeah. movies and books that come off of it. And even not all of them are central, but I mean, come on, like how many times have we seen somebody get stranded? Mm-hmm. Yes, island? exactly. Hey, you know what? Actually, though, the first time I heard of it was probably in, uh, what was that other book we read? Hatch- oh, no. It wasn't uh, Tom Sawyer, Beaver. was it? Oh, Sign of the Beaver. Yes, yeah. Sign of the Beaver, yeah. Yeah, because he reads it in there, and he says it's like his favorite book, so man, well, um, I guess like I heard of it there. Books. Yeah. So, Like, poor guy, he must have not had Harry Potter or something. I know, right? I don't know what that'd be like. All right, so uh, my baggage. Cooper? Isaiah? Whatever your name is? <laughs> uh... I never read this until um this school year for school, but like I think we had a copy on our bookshelf forever. Pretty soon it was like a kid version or something, but I've known about the book for a long time, just never actually decided to read it. Yeah. Yeah. And mine is not Dover Thrift. It's big. Yep. All right. That's for me. Yeah, I've heard of this book for a long time, never read it. Honestly, the, probably the first time I came across it was in Son of the Beaver when my mom read it out loud when I was like eight. Wait. And since oh. then, I've just known it as a name and just the guy who gets shipwrecked from Robinson Crusoe, or from Son of the Beaver. And then obviously, I've read a couple of shipwreck stories. I read the junior version of 
Swiss Family Robinson. I've seen the old Disney movie. I've seen Castaway, those kind of things. And then this year, book list, picked it up and read it. And here we are on the podcast talking about the darn thing. So, first question. You know what I've realized? You've said that, like, at the end of every single baggage. You're like, and here we are on the podcast. It's kind I, of I the think end of the everyone, story, though. I think everyone can derive that for themselves, <laughs> logically, from everything else we're saying. Yeah. And just the fact that that's what they're listening to. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cooper, do you think our listeners are not bright enough to determine that for themselves? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm <laughs> do you think <laughs> that you have to feed oh. baby food into the mouths of our viewers and listeners? Yeah. Like, they are brilliant people. That's why they chose this, obviously. I mean, sure, they do. Come right. on, Cooper. Yeah. You're above this. Choice. You apologize no right now. Apologize listeners. with a double sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. Doubly sorry <laughs> for insulting. <laughs> Your ability just to me, reason. probably nobody else, probably just me. I think that everybody else enjoys hearing me say that, but comment down yeah. below, let us know. Yeah, nobody right. comments on these. What are you talking about? All right, well, maybe they will if we tell them to. Oh, now they won't. Probably, not. I know. <laughs> okay. Maybe Cooper can tell you how okay, to guys, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, <laughs> so what are you guys' thoughts on Robinson Crusoe before we get into the nitty gritty details? It was, um, I found it ironic that it was the original Shipwreck story because it was probably my least favorite of all of them that I've mm, heard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. It was pretty boring. What exactly did you like or not like, or not like in this case? I I disliked the character of Robinson Crusoe. He's kind of a jerk. I wrote yeah. a whole essay about it. And <laughs> for school, obviously, and then yeah, not, yeah. not for right. fun. Right, obviously. <laughs> and... Yeah, I don't know. He's just like, he was like, so first of all, everybody, like, we don't need to explain this on here. We probably talked about it some with To Kill a Mockingbird stuff, but like, he was big on slavery. He was like, first of all, it seemed like everything he did was just like out of selfishness. So mm -hmm. as a kid, the book at the very beginning, like one of the first sentences was like, like, I never listened to my, to my dad or anything like that. Like, yeah, that's right. He was basically like, I was always a rebel child. And so my dad always told me, how to live a good life, like to get a good job, these kind of things. And I said, nope. So as soon as I was old enough, I ran away and like got on a ship, went to Brazil, found a cheap deal on land, which of, so I bought it and started a plantation. And then, so not only was he like, I, I want slaves on my plantation. He was too cheap to even buy his own slaves. He's like, I'm going to take a boat and go steal people from their homes in Africa and make them my slaves. So it was like double selfish. It's not just the selfish that comes along with having slaves, like not wanting to do your own work, not wanting to yeah. pay for anyone to do work, which is like a totally okay thing for you to do is like pay for labor. But like having slaves is just selfish. But then he was like, I'm not even going to buy, put the one, one time deposit down to have the free labor. I'm going to get it completely free. <laughs> and so that's what he was trying to do. He did everything it seemed like in his life, at least that we heard of in the book, out of selfishness. And that's when he got stranded on the island, which is uh, after a while, he he was still very selfish at first, felt very entitled. It seemed like he was like, I, I don't know, there's like nobody there to help him. And so he had to finally do stuff himself which he did kind of actually pretty well. I'll give him that, like surviving and getting food and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, shelter. But then, like, so then it seems like he's getting a little better. He actually happened to have a Bible with him from the shipwreck. He starts getting in the Word, starts to kind of actually develop a relationship with God, starts thinking back on times with his dad and how he should have listened to his dad, been more respectful, honored his father and mother, all that kind of stuff yeah. that he's learned from the Bible. And he then repents. it's like, he repents, yeah, supposedly. And then at the first chance he gets, he, like, sees someone else on the island and, like, I'm quoting it with my hands right now, saves them. But it almost seems like he just saved them to make him his servant, uh, unpaid servant, by the way. So basically a slave. In the book, he says that he wishes his man Zuri, quote-unquote, which was his yeah, former, Friday. you know, bond servant. Not Friday, yeah. other guy. Oh. Oh, yeah. For yeah. him. Yeah, because he wanted other people to do stuff for him. Like, he just, right. yeah. he was too entitled. He Plain felt company. entitled. He didn't want to do anything himself. 
Any one company yeah. too. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. And then like so the high the high point, I guess, for the character Robinson Crusoe and his character arc, and in my just like opinion of him, was when he was in a relationship with God, seemingly on the island, repenting, like learning about oh, definitely. Like uh what he did wrong and repenting from it. But then it seemed like as soon as anyone else came back in, he was the most important again to himself mm-hmm. and like yeah. he was selfish again the whole rest of the book it's kind of so, like he forgot yeah. everything he was learning before yeah and so we were we were writing essays on robinson crusoe and like matthew mentioned the the the, the, the thing for the essay was persuade whether crusoe was a likable or admirable character or he is not and so the way he did this for some reason we're writing the essay the same week we're finishing the book and so I started writing my essay at the high point <laughs> in his character arc, and I was like, heck yeah, this guy's likable. And I still, I think, managed to give a at least somewhat convincing case for his likability, maybe not admirability, but likability. But then uh, finishing the book, I'm like, yeah, he he didn't quite continue that for the rest of his life. And so my question to you guys is, is that the author making a conscious decision or is that the author somewhat just forgetting the character arc and doing what Robinson Crusoe would not do? Honestly, I can't tell you either way with confidence. Daniel Defoe, I think, is the author. Like, yeah. I don't know anything about him, but Same. Uh, I feel he's like a puritan. That's... Apparently, we we used to do like character biographies. We should probably start doing that again, just so we know something. No, I think I think we do. I think we do. Yeah. Um. Anyways, but like he, yeah, I don't know anything about him, so. I feel like he probably just like that was the way Robinson Crusoe was like written to be was selfish. Like that was his main character trait. It seemed like because like if he wasn't selfish, then he would have just stayed at home and just gotten a decent job, been like middle class, like his dad wanted him to be, and lived a nice life. Well, you know, I will building say he off, repented building from off that. the advice he of everyone he was else. Wrong. Yeah, but I'm saying like the whole story was a shipwreck story, but he never would have gotten shipwrecked if he wasn't selfish. So, like, he mm-hmm. kind of had to be. Or at least there would have to be something that make him get shipwrecked. But, like, it would have to be a totally different thing. Isaiah, what about you? I think he, I think it'd be pretty hard to do that on accident. Like, yeah. he'd kind of have to know what you're writing and then accidentally swap his complete, like, go back to how he was. It'd be kind of hard to do. So, I think it was yeah. on purpose. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but. Yeah. I mean, I think I, think I mostly agree with you guys. Like reading it and after seeing the, the 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 rise and fall of his character, I'm like, why? What it's it does it to me? It did seem like the author had just forgotten about it and decided not to continue it. Like that's what it felt like. It was really weird, but maybe it is just because I thought that he had repented in the first place. So. Yeah. See, I actually like writing my essay was a little bit even weirder than yours. Because you were saying, like, you started writing it when he was repentant, and you were like, oh, he turns out to be a great guy after all. Oh, never mind. Um, But you just had to stick with what you had. I started writing it before I even got to the part where he was, like, repenting on the island. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this guy's so selfish, slavery, blah, 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 slavery, selfish. Yeah. And then I got, as I was reading, I was like, oh, crap, like, maybe this essay's not going to work out. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to just pull the opposite side and hope it goes. Yeah. And then it, he he changed back again, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I guess it worked out." Yeah, it was yeah. super weird. Yeah, and I I really I find this book extremely interesting in its format because it is the first in it, of its kind, the the you know shipwreck kind. And since then, so many people have taken so many different takes on it. You know, uh, and I think I'm going to compare this to Castaway the movie with Tom Hanks, and I won't spoil anything. But it really is just about a guy who shipwrecks, basically, on an island and then goes back to society and has to deal with it. Like, he's only on the island for half of the movie, and the rest of it is him afterwards. It is a deeply, deeply psychological movie about the effects of returning to life after that. And it has a very, very clear—maybe just because it's a movie, it's shorter— but it has a very, very clear through line— character arc and also point of the psychology of a man who returns right and robinson crusoe maybe just because the first of his kind is all over the place i mean you you get 40 pages before he's on the island then he's on the island for most of it 
but then he's not on the island and he's still going on adventures and it's really weird so i find it really right and i feel like the timeline's a little screwy too because like yes the majority of the book or yeah like most of the book here uh, i don't know like uh he's he's on the island more than he's not but and but it's like the central part of the book so yeah. there's and there's a lot before and afterwards yeah so it's just i don't know it's weird it's wonky it's, it's really weird um so what do you think about the writing of robinson crusoe we already mentioned it was a little boring but anything specific you guys liked or didn't like mm, i wasn't a huge fan there was like some cool vocab i guess but there i mean that's not like i don't know it's not uh, i guess as my vocab expands more and more constantly yeah and i'm less impressed with like vocab just in writing because i'm like yeah that's not necessarily like a super hard or like impressive mm-hmm. thing to do you just have to know a lot of words i i saw some good vocab in there but like it's not like a super crazy impressive thing for an author to have good vocab because pretty much if you're an author that has a book that anyone knows about it has to at least have good vocab yeah. you can't just be like he said she said well i said I don't know, like that kind of, uh, just bland words. And but other than that, like, all, honestly, a lot of it was kind of hard to understand. Yeah, it is a very and, hard book to follow. Yeah, so that's what I didn't like. But I was I was trying to compliment it with something, and that was vocab. <laughs> that was all I could think yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- I honestly didn't like it that much either. I mean, it was just dry. It was dense, really dense. And, yeah, just, I don't know. I thought it was bad writing. Yeah, I don't know why it's so popular. I guess people just didn't have anything else to read back well, then. I mean, think about it. Today, we're unimpressed because we've had so many shipwreck stories. This was might have been really exciting for the time. And it is loosely based on a true story, so. Yeah, fair enough. But, I mean, you can still write a, about a true story and make it interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about it uh yeah i'm not really that good at like identifying if it's like really good writing i guess just the same as matthew like with the book that's why you're on a book podcast (laughs) no like the writing style thing whatever yeah Uh, Yeah, not either i just say whatever (laughs) yeah you you mean you talked about like it's it's extremely dense it's Mm -hmm. it's got some okay vocab but who cares about 20 dollar words when you can't pick them out yeah. Right, but I think that there's definitely a balance between dense writing and you know, very sparse writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, last question. We got to cut it short because Matthew's got to be somewhere. Do you think this book is more psychologically focused when Robinson Crusoe's on the island, or is it more actions focused? Because we kind of talked about this in other episodes too, how authors from years gone by would focus more on actions because i mean obviously actions speak a lot of the words but modern authors focus more on psycho psychological impacts so do you guys think it's more psychological or actions based uh i think like there's both like i think extremes on both sides have come after this so i think this is kind of like in the middle comparing to other just uh like shipwreck stories like a lot of them are really um psychological but then you look at like or you watch like the disney swiss uh yeah swiss family robinson Robinson, and it's literally all action yeah it's all action based which i mean yeah yeah because like i don't know i guess it's just because they're a family so they're not like depressed or anything (laughs) yeah so they're just like that story and this one both people shipwreck with all the supplies they need to survive yeah interesting kind of lame very convenient yep I said, what about um, you, psychological? Oh, I don't know. I think, yeah, that was all I was going to say, but uh, I guess I was just saying, like, this is fairly psychological, but not as much as, like, Castaway or something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I definitely think it's more psychological, like Matthew's saying. I mean, there are parts where it's literally, like, just uh, him, like, having a dream or hallucination or something like that, and then, like, it's all about him, like, what's going on through his mind. One, because mm-hmm. it's just him there. So it'd be kind of weird if it wasn't actually focusing on like him or like what's going yeah. in his mind. Cause, That's true, um, because with Sonny Robinson, there's the whole family. Yeah. Um, And then since it is just him there, it's a lot harder for him like mentally too, so they want to bring that out. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah, like you guys said, a a lot of both because first off, it is written in first person, and I say it's right. He's the only person on the island, so you get a big glimpse into his mind of what's going on. And at first, I thought it was going to be completely actions based, but it definitely got more psychological. And also, you guys get you get pages and pages and pages and some more pages about him detailing how he planted grain, how he made bread, how he fermented grapes for yeah. some reason about how he you know this is why i'll never read shotguns. again <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah all right so guys i think we already talked about this but are you, are you ever going to read it again and will you no. recommend to other people probably not that's what isaiah just said no, <laughs> yeah. yeah i literally just if said someone's that. someone mentions i was thinking about reading this like, no don't read it yeah honestly not if really. you're interested <laughs> in reading it academically go ahead I would but, say read it once just to see because there are people out there who like it. Yeah. But, yeah. Just a yeah, warning. Like it's not from like, Sign of the Beaver. Yeah, that is true. true. That kid's weird. He had it's probably the only book he ever Matt. had, though. Yeah, it's true. I mean, he had the Bible and Robinson Crusoe. So, honestly, I'd rather read the Old Testament stories than Robinson Crusoe any day. Probably true, yeah. 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 How many... Um, how many shipwrecks out of seven would you give Robinson Crusoe? Shipwrecks being good? Well, like, you know, it's just ten out of seven or, you know, three out of seven or whatever. Ten out of seven. <laughs> uh, I would give it, uh, uh, yeah, probably three. Three? I'd probably go with, like, a two. A two? Actually, actually, you know what? I'll give it as many shipwrecks as it has in the book. One. Two, oh, okay. three. How many are there actually? That was that was a joke. I'm still going with three. I just wanted to. <laughs> I say think that. there are yeah, like okay. three. I think there are a couple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least there's reference of maybe even more than that. Yeah. Anyway. True. Yeah, I'll give it three two. It's not that great. By the way, did you guys know that there's actually a, a sequel to this? Uh, so at the end when it no. says, but those "Don't are tell CC that." In my other account, like there's actually another account. Wow. Nobody's That's ever gonna dumb. read it, and nobody ever nope. has. So probably not. Sorry, guys, it's such a short episode, but it's not blame Matthew. Yeah. All right, let's do donor shoutouts. Matthew, where would someone go if they wanted a donor shoutout? Patreon.com forward slash booking it. Wow. All right, links in the show notes. No apostrophe, all lowercase. It's that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna say the patron name. You guys are gonna say. Which country in South America do you think this person would most likely live? Uh, okay. Nobody take any offense to this. This was Cooper's idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Nana. Matthew. Brazil. All right. Dang. Van Pappy and Wayla. Isaiah. Uruguay. Okay. Isaiah's grandparents, Mike and Sylvia, to Matthew. French Guiana. Isaiah, your parents, Mr. and Mrs. Radsky. Paraguay. Matthew, Uncle Sebi. Chile. Dang, I was going to do that one. <laughs> Isaiah, un- and Jenny and Uncle Sam. Bolivia. All right, Matthew Moses. Suriname. All right, oh. Isaiah. Zara. Venezuela. Argentina. Chris. All right, and then Isaiah, Anna. Colombia. All right, Matthew, can you think of any other South American countries? Uh, Guyana. <laughs> oh, I remember one. No, Ecuador. Oh. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Make sure to tell your friends, support us, leave a five star rating and review. Way back blah, in two blah, weeks, blah, 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 blah. with so another fun. episode. Blah, blah, blah. Why is Matthew doing this me. to me? Why do you always do this to me? All I'm trying to do is be that's the most boring right? part. Have you ever watched a YouTube video or anything and liked it when people talked about advertising themselves on their own thing? Hey, Matthew, guess what? We have a butt ton of patrons, so. Yeah, but if they're listening to this, then they already know what we are, so we don't have to I advertise know. it. I think I still think it's good. Okay. <laughs> Until next time. Keep on booking. <laughs>